Hey guys, this is Rob, and this video is going to cover what I feel is the most prominent feature updates and fixes for the electrical systems in Revit 2025. So to me, there's not really any big earth-shaking changes. There's mostly some cosmetic or arrangement type changes. And there's a few system changes that are very helpful. Stick around and you'll see what I feel are the major changes that affect us as electrical designers. <laughs> So as we review the main Revit 2025 electrical features and updates, I'll be switching back and forth between 2024 and Revit 2025 to show the differences. So what I've done is I've opened up the sample Snowden Towers project that comes with Revit 2024 and 25 so that we can analyze their model and demonstrate some of these updates they've done. The first one we'll look at is how they updated the parameters group for secondary distribution on transformers. Let's take a look at the 2024 transformers. To take a look at this, we're going to go down to the 3D view, just electrical, so we can get to their transformer. So here's the transformer. You click on that. And over here, you see that the secondary distribution system is up here grouped with electrical loads, whereas the actual distribution system is down here under electrical circuiting. So it was easy to miss the secondary distribution system when you're down here setting up this distribution system. So what they've done in 2025, it will go to the same view in 25, just electrical 3D view click on their electrical transformer, now you will see it is no longer up here grouped under electrical loads. It is now more appropriately grouped down here under electrical circuiting right next to distribution system and secondary distribution system. I think that's a very clear grouping now because you'll probably realize it was easy to miss that secondary distribution system. And if you don't set it properly, you can't connect to your transformer. Hey guys, this is Rob. If you're getting anything out of this video, I'd sure appreciate you hitting that like button to spread it to other people that could use it. And also, if you want to hang around and see lots more Revit electrical only content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Sure appreciate that. Thanks, guys. They renamed the built-in parameters voltage, wattage, and short circuit current rating for electrical equipment by appending the word comments. So, what that boils down to is if you look at Revit 2024, for example, this electrical panel, let's edit the type. Up here under electrical, they had a voltage and a wattage, but if you really get into these, they are just text. You can put ABC in here and be fine. It's not an actual voltage value that's used in calculations. So it's so it was very misleading to have this just called voltage. Same with this wattage. It is just a text. So what they've done, if we switch over to Revit 2025, is they have simply added the word comments after these two, voltage and wattage, so that it is clear that these are not voltage values or wattage values, they are just comments. In other words, just text if you want to add something, kind of like type comments down here. I think it just makes it a little more clear. They've enhanced the consistency of parameter names associated with electrical apparent power true power, and reactive power. So again, what that boils down to is just some naming conventions. Click on this panel and over on the right on these loads in Revit 2024, for example, right here, it would say apparent load phase A, and that's in VA. So that's a power, apparent load B and C. They clearly labeled current, but not power. So you switch over to Revit 2025, Click on the same panel over here. Now it says apparent power phase A instead of load. So they've just, again, done some renaming to clean things up, make it more consistent throughout the electrical documentation. They've made a few changes and updates to the electrical analysis properties within Revit 2025. So for example, here in Revit 2024, if you go up to the user interface, click the system browser and expand this out, this system they added in 2023 where you can have an electrical analytical system where you can just have loads and equipment represented as square footage values or actual amp values, actual VA values, it would only handle three phase loads. So for example, this project has some single phase residences. You click here under residence, and this is again under the analytical system, not the actual connected equipment or panels. There is this residential load Power density, 30 watts per square foot. 
the voltage is set at 208, and that's it. There is no single phase, three phase differentiation. It's all computed at three phase. So for the current value of this actual single phase panel, it comes up at 75.69 amps. It calculates it at three phase. So that, that amp value is not correct. Look over at Revit 2025 now, the same system, the same residence, 202, now says 208 and you have a number of phases option. So now we can go single phase and it gets calculated at the 131 amps. As you can see, the amps are higher because the loads only spread across the two phases. So this gives a more accurate representation of at least the current on this single phase system. That seems like a pretty valuable addition to me if you're trying to actually analyze these systems early on with some single phase elements. Now onto the non-electrical but useful changes they've made. Uh, for example, you can align keynotes, text notes, and tags with some new alignment tools. So for example, here in 2024 Revit, if we have these three tags and they're not lined up, select them all, and there's really no alignment type of commands up here. You would have to physically take these and align them, which is not a big deal with just three of them. But you can imagine if you're in a detail and you have a whole row of them, that would be kind of handy. So if you jump over to Revit 2025, we have the same situation. Select all three of these by holding the control down. Now up here, you have multiple align. So we can align these all left. We can center them all, align them right. There's even some vertical alignments, tops and bottom. So we can go like this and it aligns them all on the left. You can also distribute them vertically. For example, click all three. And up here, this one here, it says distribute vertically. If you click it, you can see how it spaced them out evenly. So just some nice little tool to make your finished product look a little more professional and laid out. They made a number of options bar changes. For example, in 2024, if you were to go up here to tag by category, click on there. This is the option bar right here. It's kind of this tiny little bar and it has some options you can check, leader or no leader, whether it's attached or, or detached end. You can set the leader length all here in this little teeny options bar. However, if you look at 2025, do the same thing, go to tag by category. Now there's no option bar. It's up here now where you can set the leader length and over here you can decide whether it has a leader line or not. So uncheck leader line and then you would just be placing tags without the leader. Click leader here and it adds the leader. So a little different functionality here. So they've moved things from the option bar over into the properties and up into the ribbon. They've improved the scrolling speed in the project browser from five rows to one row to make the navigation more accurate. So here in Revit 2024, if you go over to the project browser, if you just hit your scroll, it scrolls down five lines per detent, each scroll. So it jumps down. Whereas now in Revit 2025, you scroll one line at a time. So again, just kind of a quality of life type of update here makes it more consistent with how you might scroll over here in your in the properties dialog they've also improved the consistency of the zooming in and zooming out direction between properties palette and the project browser so here in revit 2024 if i hold down control and scroll it only scrolls we don't get any zooming whereas in the properties dialog if i hold down control and scroll, I get a zooming effect. So in 2025, that zooming effect over here on properties also works over here in the project browser. So a little more quality of life, consistency in how things behave. They improved the search in project browser to show all child nodes when the parent node contains the keyword or keywords. So again, in Revit 2024, if we were to search up here for power, for example, it only shows exactly the nodes that contain power. For example, here, power, we only get floor plans, power, and anything that contains the word power. Whereas in 2025, let's search for power. And you will see that we not only get power, but we get any sub child node here under this power that is contained within a node with power. So 
If we want to look at all the power plans, we would want to include some of these plans, even though they don't say power, they're under the power heading. So this just expands the search to include the child nodes for terms you're looking for. And they added the ability to organize sheets into sheet collections. So here in Revit 2025, let's go down to sheets. Here's all of our sheets. And if you right click on sheets, you can go to new sheet collection. And it's a collection of sheets that you can give a name. Collection one. One use for this that I can think of is if you have one project that needs a collection of sheets for permitting, perhaps, and another sheet for, for bidding, and you want the same sheet names, but perhaps different content on those different sets. So we could name this one permit set. You can add another sheet under this permit set that is called E00 cover sheet that may have different information on it or even a different title block, things like that, but the same name. I can see some use cases for this kind of sheet sets. I think that's a worthwhile upgrade.